Thank you for staying with us. The Central Bank of Nigeria has again raised the monetary policy rate, which measures interest rates by 50 basis points from 26.25% to 26.75% amid soaring inflation and skyrocketing food prices. Senior reporter Ademola Lawrence has details. The CBN Governor Olayemi Kadosu announced this after the Apex Bank's 296th Monetary Policy Committee, NPC, in Abuja. The NPC also retained a cash reserve ratio of deposit money banks at 45% and matured bank at 14% retained the liquidity ratio at 30%. Mr. Cardoso also said the committee was mindful of the effect of rising prices on households and businesses and expressed its resolve to take necessary measures to bring inflation under control. The prevailing insecurity in food producing areas and high costs of transportation of farm produce are also contributing to this trend. Members were therefore not oblivious to the urgent benefit of addressing these challenges as it will offer a sustainable solution to the persistent pressure on food prices. Also noted in its consideration, he said despite the June 2024 rise in inflation, prices are expected to stabilize soon as the monetary policy gains further traction in addition to further measure by the fiscal authority to address food inflation. The committee noted that the increase in the level of external reserves would further build confidence for a more stable exchange rate and thus urge the bank to explore available avenues to improve inflows, especially through diaspora remittances. Members noted the efforts of the federal government and private sector towards improving domestic refining capacity, as this is expected to reduce foreign exchange currently being expended on the importation of refined petroleum products. The next MPC is September 23rd and 24th. Ademola Lawrence, TVC News, Abuja. Joining us in the studio is the CEO of Finance with Mukta, Mukta Mohammed. Good morning. It's Good morning. You join us. Thank you. Now, a majority of Nigerians have been asking questions. Manufacturer Association of Nigeria have been speaking. Nasima, that's the Chamber of Commerce, has also been speaking about this increase in interest rates, saying, practically asking, why are we on this path that is seemingly not giving us the results that we need? Because when you look at the inflation rate, it's skyrocketing, and we keep increasing this interest rate. I think... Um that question should go to this. I like the way you introduced it, it that uh, majors, that spiral majors, seems not to be working because we are not addressing our core fundamental issues. What the CBN is doing is textbook economy, and textbook economy does not work in Nigeria. Mm. I've said it on your program over and over. The CBN is not doing anything different from the previous CBN management team. The management team started hiking rate. This present management team keep doing the same thing the same way. In short, you can even credit the former management team trying to intervene directly. Mm -hmm. This one is not even intervening. It's just hiking the rate, hiking the rate, hiking the rate, thinking it will address Nigeria inflationary problem. Nigeria inflationary problem is driven by production. Nigeria inflationary problem is driven by food security. Isn't that Nig easy to see? I, I don't know. Maybe they, they, they have some figure that we don't have. Right. Because I don't, I, I, I've tried to look at it and I, under, I, I just came to say what is really happening. Because, the infl look, food inflation, tomatoes alone is 40%. Tomatoes alone. What, is it rocket science for us to produce tomatoes? It's an all round, it's an all round season product. What has government do, done? When they look at the micro, I mean the, the physical side, the intervention, the green, where we feel, have we seen them? The rise. It's true. What is killing Nigeria is food security. And what is driving food security? Insecurity mm -hmm. in one of those largest producing farm settlements in Nigeria. What is driving food uh, uh, inflation? 
transportation, high cost of transportation of these goods from point A. What is driving high cost of transportation? High cost of petroleum, petroleum products. Now, from the north to from the north to move um, petrol in the north, average is selling for 900 naira per liter. Mm. So where, where, I don't understand. Then we had a game changer. And I keep saying about the game changer, the game changer, the game changer. But now it seems that we have been fighting the game changer, which is what will bring down cost of petrol. What we bring, we are talking about local refining of our petroleum oh, product. Dangote refinery. refinery. We're shouting. Everybody say that's a game changer. Finally, here we are fighting the game changer. Not only that, the game changers, the people, the more part of the man that we are fighting is part of the economic um, emergency um, committee that Mr. President set up for six months. Mm -hmm. And now he's busy trying to save his business. What time does he even have to sit? He, he will not even sit there. Look, what is the essence of saying, I have money mm. and my people are suffering? I saw the CBN statement yesterday, priding themselves that the exchange rate in 18 days have been, I mean, the FX, I mean, the FX reserve in 18 days have been improved by $200 billion. Mm -hmm. And yet, our exchange rate is still $1,500. $1,580. So, what, 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 what does that look like? How, you see, panicking, that's what the CBN seems to be doing. They panic. Remember I said in this program, the last time we saw it, like a little slowdown was when the exchange rate moved to 1-2. One, 1-2, two. Yes. One, two, one, yes. And immediately they did that, before you know, they suspend the bureau change, revoke their licenses. Oh, they don't. Then you saw the exchange rate, beam, beam, beam. Now it got to 1,600 again. They panic. They say, bureau change, come. We'll give you money. So, so they don't have a clear strategy. They are not even thinking out of the box. How much of me, how many minister, Mr. President ministers have, is thinking out of the box? You can count them. Hmm. You cannot see anyone thinking out of the box. Everybody is doing same thing, same way. Same thing, same way. Same thing, same way. You are killing our businesses every day by, by, by hiking interest rates. Cost of business is going up by the day. Consumers are not buying. How, I mean, businesses are shutting down. Foreigners that can have easy access to, to, to even cheap uh, uh, funds from their respective countries are exiting Nigeria. We are saying that you are attracting investment. Just yesterday, the, the, the Nigerian Stock Exchange came out with the data. Within the past six months, foreign portfolio investors that have exited Nigeria were 311 billion. So what are we, it's, it's like government magic, like Fela will say. You just see the magic, you see the magic on paper, but on reality... So, so are you are saying there is no advantage to this decision that we are making or this path that we are taking? What advantage? There is nothing. Nigeria is an um, informal-driven economy. 80% mm. of those that are employed in this country are from the informal sector. sector right. Informal sector is driven by what? Cash. You, uh, you are trying, you remember when we did the currency change. change. You remember what happened to the informal sector? Yeah. Now, you keep on saying you are um, 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 tightening. Mm -hmm. You are reducing a uh, spray of um, I mean, uh, circulation of liquidity in the system. When you do that, what happens? The informal sector keeps suffering. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they will keep suffering. So we know that the economy is supposed to be driven by, every economy is driven by production. Now, with this situation, what, what can be done? What is productivity? Mm. Productivity itself comes from policies. Policy drive productivity. When you don't have policy, how, why will you be productive? Mm. Now, where we are, as it is now, what is the most productive sector of our economy? You cannot point at one because almost all of them are dying by the day. Now, look at what we are going to do. The major cause of inflation is food. We have addressed that. So it's not, um, it's not um, reducing liquidity in the system. So how do you do the, address it? If you look at our farmers, our farmers cannot, they cannot give us enough. They don't have the capacity to produce enough for every Nigeria. Yeah. What is your short-term goal? What is your long-term goal? What is your short-term strategy? Is your short-term strategy to make food available while you grow your agricultural sector? We talked about opening up uh, the borders and also, you know, importing food items at some point. Seeing this so people just came out and said, no, that wouldn't be See, idea. Since this administration came to power, it's over a year. 
what what is it rocket science to have known that right from the day they came in, right from the day that Mr. President says subsidy gone, the challenge has been food and transportation. Mm -hmm. Everybody knows it. I heard um, you interviewing uh, Kasim Afua. He said giving the governor, government another one year. One year. People, there's hunger in the land. Let's tell Mr. President the truth. There is hunger in the land. Mm. Serious hunger. The, the protest that we are trying to witness is not a protest of um, Nigerian Labour Congress or, or, or NSAS that were driven it by is youth. brutality. This is the really brutality. This is hunger. Hunger brutality. When you say hunger, they say hunger does not answer to any name mm. than to, to, to see food. The president said we are going to roll out um, uh, grains, we are going to roll out trucks, we are going he to... Gave some, he gave the governors grains. Basically. Where? Which governor? You know our governors, if they have grain, they will, tell, they will, they will come to TVC, they will buy pay, uh, pay adverts so that you can advertise how they were distributing the grain. How many governors have come to Even TVC? Even Kasim that we interviewed confirmed he just, he that uh, in, his, well. in his state that they got, they got the grains. Forget about Kasim and his state. You know he's an opposition, he will say that. I don't want to go into that. He's in the opposition side in his state. Well, okay, let's look at Lagos State. We have a, we have a proactive governor. Mm. Have you seen Green? I, I don't work. So, no, 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 no. If you, you, are in, you are here now. Yes. So you I you will know. You will ask people that have this. Okay, I let me ask you a question. Have you seen anybody that comes to you that says, government just gave me half bag of rice? Or but one government one will not put it out there if they did not give it but, to them. But, 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 but again, you are saying, it's, see, it's government magic. CMG buses, hmm. 300. Today, 400. Today, have you seen anyone? Are people accepting CNG, CNG initiatives? People will accept it. But have you seen... <coughs> well, I've seen conversion centers. Let me tell you. Well, we've seen conversion centers. Well, we've seen, we've seen, yeah, when uh, you are talking conversion centers. We've seen regassing centers. We've seen <laughs> CNG buses. No, let me tell you. If the regulator cannot even regulate and come out for us to say that the, the, the diesel that we have been using for almost six months by Dangute Refinery has high... Content of sulfur. Sulfur, yeah. How confident are you to take your car that you cannot buy? You cannot even buy a new car. How confident are you to take it to them? How confident? Are you not, are you not going to be scared? The regulator that cannot regulate what is imported, mm. then the regulator that cannot even regulate what is in, within your country, they, it took a um, uh, fighting. Have you asked yourself, why are we where we are? Mm. Look, when we saw Dizu from a height of about 2,000, Crash to one, two, nobody made noise. Right. Immediately, what will affect and drive down inflation is about to happen. That they said, okay, Dango, they say, finally, we'll roll out petrol in July. Oh, we'll roll out in August. All hell was let's lose. That's when we knew that it was producing inferior petroleum product. Mm. So, so you see, we have, he said, it, the same man that you are fighting said, he does not take rocket science to solve Nigerian problem. Nigerian economic problem is not rocket science. Mm. And I totally agree. We need food. We have land. Insecurity is not making us go to farm. All around irrigation is not bringing tomatoes to the local people. Because local production of rice is very expensive. Food that comes in from this country that we cannot produce, tariff is very high. Government, take a bite off your tariff. Government, come down to the people. Bring down cost of production. Bring down cost. Once cost of production comes down, what will happen? Nigeria inflation is driven by a lot of factors right. that are not globally, that, that are not in global textbooks of economics. Okay, so Let me give you one. Okay. Cost of production inflation, one. Cost of microeconomic policy inflation, two. Demand and supply inflation, three. And then the fourth one, have you ever heard it? Exchange rate driven inflation. It's only in Nigeria. Mm. That we have exchange volatility driven inflation. Why? Because over 80% of what we consume, we import. If we don't even import what we consume, the machinery that will help us make it consumable, we import it. Remember, there was a time we were having challenges like this. And the then minister for, 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 for finance and economic, uh, economy, head of the economy management, current um, DG of World Trade Organization, yes. said every machine that is coming to the manufacturing sector that will help in aiding production will come up zero tariff. Zero tariff. Why are we not having people thinking that this is the cause? Our problem 
is not high in interest rate. High in interest rate is killing our business. When CBM can only borrow about almost 27 percent, how much? How much do you think CBM will give to me and you? Mm -hmm. The banks are out. There. I mean, the banks are going to give. The banks are out there to make money. Rather, even some of your policies is also is making the bank begin to think, how can we make money? Mm -hmm. You want to collect what you have already collected 30 percent from the bank before. You want to collect under 50 percent from them. How are they going to happen? So when they get that rate at 26 percent, you and I, that is business. How much, how much do you think they will give it to a 40 percent now? 35 percent. Hmm. So we, we are seeing we are seeing policies that are same of same, and we expect a different result. In short, it's even worse than same of same. Right. Because when you look at the banks, they are the key drivers of the, any economy. Mm -hmm. And what we are seeing now is policy to kill the bank. It came up with recapitalization, global ec 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 economic textbook capitalization. You recapitalize with your shareholders on retain earnings. Okay, you so say don't use it. Is it is it yet to hold? Can we also still bounce back? And uh, have something better. We can bounce back. They know what to do. I'm asking you, what yeah. do we do? I've told you what we do. Take a bite of our revenue. Mm. Well, that, they... well, that will leave a lot of other sectors. Oh, which working? sector? Who is the key driver? Manufacturing sectors are crying every day. When you take a bite of your revenue, that sector will come up. They are, larger, they are the largest employment of labor. They are a private driven sector, informal sector, SMEs. What will happen? You get jobs for your people. Take a bite of your revenue. Let them come in with machines for zero tariff. Let's see zero tariff in some household item. If I'm saying it, if the CBN does that, if inflation will not come down. But we are in a country where, despite the, despite the different initiatives by the federal government, the price of goods that have been up still remains up. You know why? It comes down. You know why? Inflation, if exchange rate, I would say exchange rate. The price of goods still remain high because some the person things, that... Is, some things are not based on exchange rates. Rate. Well, let, let, me, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you something. Most of the goods that are high, mm. household items, you talk about food, you talk about um, cereal. Mm. Do we produce it here? Gary, we produce Gary here. What of the machinery in producing Gary? Do you fabricate it here? And if, if you fabricate it here, the car that takes it to the market, do you have any fabricating plant when, it's, when your car spare part is, 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 is not, it has a problem? Where do you go to? Mm. Do you have any fabricating plant here? Then the man is saying, that I want to make sure that we have steel. And you are fighting and he says, no, no, the blue is steel. You look, it's, it's... It's complex. It's very complex. You see? So, look, let me tell you why you see those things like that. The man that has got imported those products into Nigeria or got one of those products. At the time, he, 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 he bought, let me use, you said Gary. By the time the person produced Gary, what was the cost of transportation? I'm telling you now. The cost of production will keep going up by the day. So when he's bringing it to the market, it will add that cost. The person that imports, when the person brings in the product, he imported it at 1,009, well, maybe 1,600. Mm -hmm. And up to now, he has not seen people to buy it. He has not even uh, uh, um, 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 stock of his own because a lot of Nigerian earning powers is still down. 70,000 minimum wage, we've not started collecting it. Mm -hmm. So even if you collect it, 70,000 minimum wage is almost as the same thing as when Mr. President came to power. Because at that time, the exchange rate was 700. So that minimum wage was $34. Today, the exchange rate is 1,500. That million wage is still 70,000. Mm -hmm. So what are we talking? It's still $34. Your life has not moved forward. And rather, inflation has gone up by 40%. Mm -hmm. Interesting. But when we look at um, this matter of uh, capital inflow sustainability, uh, stable exchange rate system that the government is looking at, it, because of that's the essence for why you know, it made this increment. What is capital inflow? I just told you something. Yeah. Nigerian stock exchange just came up and said mm. foreign investors in the I past six months are leaving. Are leaving. So, what's so how do we attract so them? Out? With the numbers you see that you are so excited is because of the intense of violation, violation. Because the exchange rate is 1,000. So they say capital importation has improved. Hmm. Because of the exchange rate, they look at only in the exchange of the exchange rate. The man that the $1,000 that used to be 700,000 is now 1.5 million. So why would that not make it look like if capital importation has improved? You are trying to say you want to attack foreign... Can't we borrow a leave from how other countries have addressed this matter? Really? No, we are borrowing a lift, but we are borrowing the wrong lift. <laughs> we are doing the same thing UK is doing, and UK inflation is going down. We are doing the same thing US is doing, US inflation is going down. We are not looking at what South Africa is doing or what Kenya is doing. What are they doing differently? Let me, Kenya what? may have their challenge now yeah. with the president, but when he came, he did the same thing. He hike, he removed subsidy. Then he saw the people were crying, shouting. Yeah. He said, you know what? Household item, imported food products, zero subsidy. Inflation went from 
to about 15%. Mm. Mm. So it's no rocket science. We know where the problem is. You, you see, your reserve has improved. And yet the life of your people are not improving. The exchange rate is not improving. So you are just keeping the money there. What is the money generated? You are hiking it. You say banks, uh, so that you discourage people to, um, from going to get liquidity and change it to dollar. Mm. And, I ask, and I ask myself, who the only people that are looking for Naira to dollar are the elites. And most of those elites, they are looking for Naira to dollar to, to save, to keep the, their, their loot, their corrupt loot in their houses. Mm, really? Yeah. We have seen it now. We have seen cases now. This, is, there's this loot in the bank. If they're in the bank, you see they were frozen. The only place that we see FCC froze immediately and get judgment is when they go after Yahoo Yahoo boys. I feel see then got judgment in other places, cases. <laughs> so look, we are playing. We are, see, we are we are playing with fire. Mm. That's hunger that's is fire. Mm. Mm. Hunger. But government has beginning to say they are they are asking Nigerians to give them more time. More time. You, you see, the problem is government is created for two things. I keep saying it, prosperity and security. Right. Where is the prosperity? There's no prosperity, there's no security. You are saying the people should give you more time. The people are against you, when, when you came to power, our life is better than as you, it, as, as you are in power now. How will you be happy? Look, the gov see, it, I don't know, because the template, you remember I said it on this program that the thing, the thing going for us when the three presidential aspirants, we said they're going to attack the economy because we've, we've seen them economically, they are, yes, they, they, they are sound. And, we, and we, every one of us agreed to the removal of few subsidies, or the three of them rather. Please, let me tell you, so subsidy was, you know, I've, I've been an advocate of removal of subsidy. Yeah. Subsidy will go, subsidy has to go. Mm. And it has gone. Now, subsidy have gone. The three tiers of government have, their revenue has improved. Yes. What are they doing? So that's where we should be looking so at. So everybody is looking at the federal government. I agree, federal government, federal government, federal government. Who is looking at the state governor? So when we live in the federal government, we look at state governors. Nobody is talking about local government. Well, they just uh, got their autonomy. Autonomy. That's what Mr. President worked for them. Mm. Before the autonomy, what did they do? Okay, we are waiting. Now the local governors, they, they, are, the community, they were going cup in hand. The, you you government. say good now. The local gov, the local government chairman will start going to Abuja to sit for allocation very soon. Mm -hmm. For the important priorities, you see it now. The councillor in charge of finance is flying to Abuja very soon. Then he comes out with his overhead costs. Look, Nigerian problem is not policy; <laughs> it's implementation of policy. So how does all of this affect um, um, our competitiveness in the global market? Competitiveness, you can't compete now. That's your cost, your, you can't compete. Now, Nigerian products are even the cheapest in Africa because of our exchange rate. Mm -hmm. And the uh, cost of production is high. So how can you marry that together? Mm -hmm. So you see, what you see is that you see a lot of turnover. You see our companies are doing well in terms of turnover. Then you look at their bottom line. Look, government is saying we want to tax the windfall from, uh, from banks to the foreign exchange policies. What of those that suffered... Uh, losses because of the windfall, because of the policy. So are you taxing them to improve that sector? Mm -hmm. Or are you just taxing them to improve your revenue so that you can, you can distribute to the three tiers of government? Mm -hmm. We need to be, we need, we, we, we need to look at our, ourselves critically in the eyes and say, we have those people that can change the narrative. But we are just not yet ready. Why are we not? No, yeah. <laughs> it, it, will take, it will take something for us to be ready. What would it take? It will take a lot. It take a lot. Now it's taking a lot because everybody is hungry. Mm. And the president is beginning to say, give me time. Perhaps we have to give it to the president. Remember during the end SARS time, it was threats. Mm. Ah, we do this. But they seem to be saying, you know what, give us time. Please, can we talk? Perhaps all of these things that we are facing at this time, it had perhaps been foretold before. Yes. The president has said we will face tough times because... We have a roadmap that we're implementing. I Perhaps agree with you. If the president is asking for more time, don't you think we should just listen you and see, follow? Like I said something, the economy, you know, Paul Alaje used to say something that I like quoting. He said, when you commit spiritual sin, you go to God. Father, forgive me. I have heard. God is a merciful God. He will forgive you. When you commit economic sin, you will pay for it. Hmm. That's why we have the EFCC. No, I'm not talking about... EFCC arresting. I'm talking about the economy seen based on policy. Okay. Mm. When you are supposed to save money, you did not save money. 
When we were supposed to buy a particular thing at a particular time, you did not say. When we were supposed to remove subsidy, you did not remove subsidy. When you're supposed to grow the economy, so you will pay for it. Unfortunately, this government is the one that is paying the highest price for it. Now, when the president says it's, it's, it's in its time, but what the people want to see is a short time gap. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, the long term plan is always there to bring down inflation, the long term plan is always there to create most jobs. But what are you doing in the short term so that the people will be alive to take that job? You see, we are not talking of, before, you know, before now, Nigerian problem used to be our youth are unemployed. Our youth are unemployed. Our youth are unemployed. But presently, Nigerian cry is, we are hungry. Both the youth, everybody. So it's a different, it's a different cry this time. Address the hunger in the land. Let them so, be so food. How, what would you say would be the best way for government to address this matter of hunger? You have talked about security, which is a long-term thing. Look, the way you can address hunger, number one, look at those companies that can help us improve in terms of our capacity to provide for our people, okay. support them. Okay. That is why we, that's why most of us are shouting, why are you fighting Dangote when it's going to help our economy grow? But there are intrigues to that, but we don't. No, that's an intrigue to that. I'm not, I mean, we don't know. We, look, the man in, in the, that is hungry doesn't want to know the intrigue. We want to see food on his table. Absolutely. So what, 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 whatever the intrigues, put the intrigues behind the scene, and then let us be food. Then you can fight yourself behind. Let's all see petroleum products. Let's not import products so that our, we have the CBN will not say they have more effects in their account. Right. And then bring that exchange rate if inflation will not come down. Secondly, I keep saying it, take a bite of your revenue right. in the importation of food uh, products. Support local industries because cost of um, uh, uh, um, um, fund is high. Now, I saw the Jigawa State Governor doing something. No matter how small it is, he says he's going to give them all SMEs 150000 You know what 150000 will do to a tomatoes yes. farmer mm -hmm. at this time? Mm. Those are the type of measures we need to see. Physical side. See, there is no how in any economy in the world where the physical side and the monetary side always do the same thing. Mm. The monetary side will look at the, uh, at the data. The physical side will look at the people. What are the people suffering? I say, okay, you know what? This data is hiking rate. How can we help them so that they cannot suffer so much? But what we are seeing is we don't see that synergy. It seems to be that they are, they are doing the same thing. Physical side does it. Physical side will hike rate. Uh, I mean, monetary side will hike rate. Physical side will increase, will increase okay. level. <laughs> It's, it's a whole lot, but um, you have also said a lot here, and I believe that uh, those that need to hear. Hopefully. Heard... Hopefully. <laughs> because all the people there, all the people there are my bones. Yeah. They know this thing. It's not okay. science. Sometimes I ask somebody, is it that when we go to government, we forget all those brilliant ideas we used to give when we were not in government? They've heard what Mukhtar Mohammed is saying <laughs> to the government. Thank you so much, CEO Finance with Mukhtar, for your time on the program. My pleasure. Thank you.